In this video we share Pope, Benedict XVI protected the Medjugorje apparitions. What were Pope, Benedict XVI's actions to prevent her enemies from destroying Medjugorje from within the church? Pope, Benedict XVI was perhaps the greatest Catholic theologian of the 20th century and perhaps one day he will be named a doctor of the church. But few know that he significantly accompanied the Medjugorje phenomenon from the beginning, although in a hidden way. In the same year of 1981, when the apparitions began, he was appointed prefect of the Congregation for the Doctrine of Faith by Pope John Paul II. And for more than three decades he was the preponderant figure, to mold the treatment that the Church would give to these apparitions, safeguarding them so that they would follow their course. Here we will talk about how Pope Benedict XVI actively protected the apparitions of Medjugorje in a covert way, so that his influence was not aborted by the ecclesiastical hierarchy. Joseph Ratzinger came from Bavaria, a region known for its Marian devotion. And during the pontificate of Pope John Paul II he gave the theological interpretation of the Marian phenomenon, which Pope John Paul II would later express with emotional gestures. He emphasized the importance of Mary and her role in the life of Jesus and the faith of the Church. Without Mary, there is no Jesus. And he said that Marian dogmas are the guarantee that Jesus is God and also a true man. I would say that Mary is the link between the Old and New Testaments. That is figure, image and model of the Church. That in it femininity shines in all its fullness and also the meaning of human life. And he points out our destiny through the dogma of his assumption to heaven. He admitted to the journalist Vittorio Massori that he read The Third Secret of Fatima, after the attack on Pope John Paul II on May 13, 1981. This was just before the beginning of Our Lady's Medjugorje appearances. And in practical terms Cardinal Ratzinger always recommended patience about Medjugorje, which in the end was the right position. He pointed out its fruits and the need for orthodoxy in religious practice, regarding preaching, evangelization, sacraments, etc. But his relationship with Medjugorje was much deeper than is known. Father James Mulligan recounted a meeting in Linz between Cardinal Ratzinger and Father Slavko Barbaric, spiritual director of the visionaries of Medjugorje. Where Cardinal Ratzinger assured him that the Church does not want to repress everything that is bringing good spiritual fruits. And Mulligan also reported that Cardinal Ratzinger would have visited Medjugorje incognito in 1985, according to information from taxi drivers and other townspeople. An Irish pilgrim named Mary E. Smith, who was with a friend named Anita Curtis, remembers that they were sitting on the steps of the sacristy and Cardinal Ratzinger walked towards them at a distance of half a meter. He lowered his head and turned it towards the wall of the church, as if he didn't want to be recognized by the pilgrims. He was dressed in civilian clothes, white shirt with short sleeves open at the collar and light gray pants. There are reports of three visits. It is known that the Vatican has regularly sent observers to Medjugorje. And Monsignor Edmund Fahat, a former apostolic nuncio in Austria, said that he had spoken to Ratzinger when he was already Benedict XVI, in 2009, about his pilgrimage to Medjugorje, and said that the Pope was delighted. But the most significant contribution of Pope Benedict XVI may have been the protection he gave to Medjugorje, so that she would not be condemned by the bishopric of Mostar, and thus run the risk of getting lost in history, as has happened to so many Marian apparitions. And he always did it with a low profile and reflective, as was his characteristic. In 1982, the local bishop, Monsignor Pavel Jonic, created a commission to study the apparitions of Medjugorje. According to Father Tomislav Pervon, Provincial of the Franciscans of Herzegovina, in his book Medjugorje, A Prophetic Sign for the World, he says that Bishop Jonich moderated the work of the Commission and worked to obtain a negative verdict on Medjugorje. He was influenced by the dossier that the Communists of the former Yugoslavia had made, to discredit the apparitions. 
The result of the commission was that its supernaturalness was not recorded but that it was simply a human phenomenon. He gave Cardinal Ratzinger the result and expressly asked him to ban everything around Medjugorje, saying that everything was just fraud, superstition and popular deception. He also demanded a ban on pilgrimages. Ratzinger studied the documentation carefully, and did not accept the committee's vote. And he asked for the opinion of the Yugoslav Episcopal Conference and Cardinal Kohoric of Zagreb. They convened a new commission, whose members went to Medjugorje precisely when Father Pervon was a local pastor. The conclusion was also that his supernaturalness is not recorded, but he added that the large number of pilgrims and believers who attend require urgent pastoral attention and concrete concern on the part of the pastors. And that the bishops are obliged to develop appropriate liturgical pastoral orientations. This was the so-called Zadar Declaration of 1991. But it has transpired that Cardinal Ratzinger was also dissatisfied with the work and judgment of this commission. While in Mostar he took over as Bishop Ratko Peritz in 1992 and went a step further. From the beginning, the new bishop campaigned that Medjugorje is not supernatural, and ignored the Zada declaration regarding pastoral care. He did everything possible to shed a bad light on the visionaries of Medjugorje, and the whole phenomenon worldwide. And when Monsignor Peritz was about to officially declare that Medjugorje's appearances were false, Pope Benedict XVI himself appointed a high-level international commission, in 2010, to objectively examine everything related to Medjugorje, and make a final judgment. The commission was made up of cardinals and experts from various disciplines and had 17 members. At the head was Cardinal Camillo Ruini, Episcopal Vicar of Rome. He worked for four years, and presented his decisions to Pope Francis in 2014. Father Pervon talks about the final decision of the Ruini Commission. The Commission focused on studying the first days of the apparitions, because then the persecutions caused them to take place in less controlled and safe environments to open an opinion. Of the 15 present in the final vote, 13 gave their opinion that the apparitions were supernatural, one against and another abstained. Therefore, the International Commission considered verbatim that the beginnings of the Medjugorje phenomenon cannot be reduced only to human dynamics, but have a supernatural origin. Interestingly, the result of Bishop Jonich's commission was exactly the opposite, 13 votes against, one vote in favor and one neutral vote. Therefore, Benedict XVI played a crucial role in protecting so that the Medjugorje phenomenon followed its course without negative interference from the hierarchy. Based on this verdict, Francis took the jurisdiction of Medjugorje into his own hands and sent Archbishop Henrik Hoser as apostolic administrator and upon his death replaced him with Archbishop Aldo Cavalli in 2022. Both with permanent headquarters in Medjugorje. Please support my channel by liking this video and watching one of my others. May God bless you and keep you. Our Lady, Queen of Peace, pray for us.